Okay, you guys can read the question so long. So whenever I see a question that has, um, let's, let's quickly write something here. I'm trying to give you guys some, some tips that you can use on all the types of questions, not only this one. Whenever the question involves two objects that crash or move apart, think conservation of linear momentum. Yeah, but Kevin, didn't we have two objects in the previous question? Some of you might be saying, yep, I agree we did. But in this question, the objects are not crashing into each other and they're not moving away from each other. They're just moving together. But in this question, we actually have a physical collision that is going to take place between the ball and the goal box or whatever that thing is, um, the container. There is a collision happening. And so we're going to use conservation of momentum. Now, some of you might be like, I don't even remember that. We did that so long ago. Yes, so you guys would have done this in term one. The conservation of linear momentum formula is the one that goes like this. Let me just erase. Um, how do I get rid of this text box? Eraser. Ah, there we go. It's the one that does this. M1V1 plus M2V2. These are the initial velocities equals to M1V1 plus M2V2. That is the conservation of linear momentum. How can you remember that? Well, mass times velocity is momentum. So that might give you a little bit of a suggestion on what the conservation of momentum formula is. Question 4.1 says, state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Okay, so I'm going to quickly summarize that for you. I'm not going to give you the word for word definition. You can go study that before your exams, but I'll try to remind you what it's all about. It tells us that in an isolated system, the total linear momentum remains constant in magnitude and direction. Oh, I can't. Yeah, in an isolated system, the total linear momentum remains constant in magnitude and direction. All right, so let's erase that. <clears throat> All right, let's carry on guys. So that's 4.1 complete. Calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the bore container system immediately after the collision. So what we do is we use M1V1 plus M2V2 equals to M1V1 plus M2V2. Um, initial, initial, final, final. Now, I know that some teachers tell you that when the objects stick together after the collision, you should combine these two together. And, and, and they, they show you all these fancy formulas, these formulas that go like this, for example. They do stuff like this. And then if the objects stick together in the beginning, then they'd make you do stuff like this. Guys, it's, it's nonsense. You don't have to know any of that. You do not need to know any of that. That is just confusing. You can use this formula every single time and it will always give you the correct answer um, at the end, every single time. I'll show you now what I'm talking about. Okay. so. You must choose a direction, so you can choose a direction. Let's choose to the right as positive or east as positive, because that's what they've got here, east and west. So now we just go fill in the values. So let's say that the ball is object number one, and let's say that the container is object number two. So now it's easy, 0, 0,45 times its initial velocity of 9 plus um, 0, 0,2 times by... Uh, the container's initial velocity is zero because it's at rest equals to, um, now here we go, look at this, the two objects are going to stick together. So you can, you can keep it separate if you want. You can just say 0, 0,45 multiplied by the final velocity of the system plus 0, 0,2 times by the final velocity of the system. Both of these velocities are the same. And so mathematically, aren't these going to combine with each other anyways? 
no need to go put them in fancy brackets and stuff. It's just unnecessary. Um, so what happens now is that you can put these two together. Or in fact, you can type all of this on the left hand side on the calculator. So that's just going to be 0.45 times 9, 4 comma 0, 0,5. And then on the right hand side, you would end up with 0 comma 0,65 V. And then divide by 0 comma 0,65. And that gives us 6.23 meters per second east. <clears throat> and that's it. That's quite an easy question. Okay, so the point is, is that these two objects are going to be moving at 6.23 uh, meters per second after the collision. So the next question says, determine by means of a suitable calculation whether the collision between the ball and the container is inelastic or elastic. Okay, so some of you might be like, what? I haven't done this in so long. Let me quickly remind you. So you get two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. Right, in an elastic collision, the total kinetic energy of the system remains constant. Therefore, the EK of the system before, or let's say initial, is equal to the EK of the system final. Okay? In a inelastic collision, the total kinetic energy of the system. does not remain constant. Therefore, the EK of the system before does not equal the EK of the system final. Okay, you can quickly write that down. That's just a little recap of elastic versus inelastic. Okay, so let's quickly go tackle that question. It shouldn't take us too long, probably four minutes or so. Okay, so what we need to go and do is we need to go calculate the kinetic energy before. So that will be um, a half. Let's do it for the EK of the ball plus the EK of the container. So that's going to be a half. 0, 0,45. Remember, um, remember that EK is a half MV squared. So that's going to be um, 9 squared plus a half times 0 times, not 0, 0, 0,2 is the mass. But the velocity initial is 0 because it's not moving. So then you can go work that out as 18, 225 joules. I'm not going to round off yet. It's not the final answer. 18,225 joules. Then what we can go and do is we can work out the EK after or the EK final by taking the EK of the ball plus the EK of the container. If you want to combine them into one mass, you definitely can. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just going to keep it separate. So I'm going to say a half times 0 0.45. Now the velocity is 6,23, and then the container is also 6,23. And if you go work that out, you get 12,61 joules. So can you see that the kinetic energy before is not the same as the kinetic energy afterwards? So therefore, this collision was inelastic. Pretty easy.